I'm going to record on this computer just because I want to be able to pass it off if there's something. Oh, the books class. Okay. So I think I actually have the books class available, or I can just regenerate it if I want, if we want to do that. What were you hoping to do with the books class? Just what it is? Got it. Okay. So let's, we're going to make a books class. That sounds good. So you don't have any starter code for me to look at or anything like that that you want to go from, right? Great. Okay. Not a problem. So this is an old demo of mine. We can actually even hit inheritance with books, which is nice. Okay. So what are we going to have? Let's think about what a book would have inside of it. Like if you were going to say, uh, this is a book, what kind of thing do we have in it? We have a uh, title. We have, uh, let's say, author uh, number of pages. Let's say, let's say that's all we have for a book. Okay, is there? Well, maybe we want something else, but I, I wanted the number of pages for sure. I wanted a number in there, and you know, publisher maybe. Uh, is it taken out or not? Let's let's leave it like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to have in our book class. If we had a struct, I'd have three variables inside of it, a string, a string, and an integer, and that's all I'd have. But then you'd be like, okay, I want to take out this book. Now, let me pass in this book, and let me do this, and let me do that. And for the book to see if the book has already been taken out, let's say, um, let's, say let's do a library one as well, just because uh, I want to show you that. If I have a book that is on loan for some to somebody else, you can't take it out. Just that so we're just coming up with an idea. Uh, yep, it would be the exact same if you wanted to do that for movies. Our movies media file is not the same as that when in terms of like it's on loan or not. No, because the media file it's on my personal library and I'm choosing when I want to watch my movie, right? It's mine. Versus somebody else could take it and now you don't have access to this thing. That's sort of Oh, unloan this. That we're going to do a library book next. So let's leave that out. Okay. We're just going to stick with this. Let's make a class called the book class. What do we need? We're going to need getter and setter methods for the title, the author, number of pages. Uh, I might want to do something with it. Um, I'm trying to think about it. Maybe find text and maybe find text inside of it or something like that. We'll 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 figure something out. All right, so we're going to add a class. So all this class is, it's going to look and act exactly like a struct, except it has functions associated with it. The bundled up bunch of data has functions that go along for the ride. And that way you don't have to pass in things into your parameter. But more importantly, it's sort of how you think about it. The book knows about itself. The book, you read four more pages in the book. So maybe I will, we'll have a... Maybe we'll have a, the current page number or something like that. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I can just call it book, I think. That should be fine. OK, so this is a book. I'm going to have, I'm always, by just sort of default, I guess, right now, we're going to have private variables. I mean, I don't want somebody going in and just changing the title of the book. If I have a book in the library, you can't go over, I can't go over to my bookshelf and say, that um, Order of the Phoenix book, that was written by David Sprague. Like, it's me getting out a crayon and writing in my name instead of uh, J.K. Rowling, right? No. The author, the, like, the book should have some kind of control mechanism in there. That's the theory. Of course, books are, are more permanent than that, but... The idea is if you, someone says, um, or the author of the book, if you're writing your own book and I, the, the, the author of the book is David Sprague, fine. The author of the book is Seymour Butts. No, not allowed, right? You could do some error checking in that case in case someone gives you a crank name for a book. Um, and then we'll have an array of books, let's say. And we'll look for the author, or look for something in it. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to have, I'm going to have some, a string again. I want to make sure I include my string class. That's fine. And a 
Okay. Author string. Um, what's the title? We probably have a whole bunch of pages of our book, but uh, where you are in the book. I want something in there. Why is that wrong? Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh, it was already in there, so why is it working on me? Ah, thank you. Every time. Uh, Java, you don't have that problem, by the way. Wonderful. And nice eye, by the way. All right. I have four variables. What I want to do is I'm going to have a bunch of get and set methods. I'm also going to have, let's make two constructors. Do I need a destructor? That's a good question. I technically don't need a destructor here, but I could have a destructor. Can hopefully maybe you guys, uh, yeah, I, I, but the weird thing is, Freed, I get stuck on that stupid thing repeatedly, like we daily. I forget to put that in there and I forget again. It's sad. It's sad, sad, sad. Okay. That's neither here nor there. Let's not bash me more than I already did. So uh, the Java has references. It acts like a pointer. So when I pass in an object, I don't actually pass in the object. It is a pointer to the front of the object. It's not called a pointer. It's called a reference, but it passes the object itself. I don't get duplicates like I do with a basic variable. Java tries to hide what C++ does explicitly, which sounds good until you hit weird cases and you don't realize why Java is doing stupid things. And then you find out later when you learn C++, oh, it's because it's passing the reference where it's like where the front of that object is. It's passing that around to my function. And that's why I don't get duplicates of my object every time I call a function. It's it effectively, by hiding away what goes on under the hood, sometimes it's beneficial, sometimes it's problematic. Java also doesn't have delete. You uh, It has a garbage collector. You stop referring to that object, it will delete it for you. But it deletes it for you when, it, well, when it's good and ready to delete it for you. So if it uses up all your memory, if you're, like you're making a video game and you need it to be high performance, and it's just choosing it, taking its sweet time deleting those objects that no longer are being referenced. You have suddenly like game going well, game going well, goes down to a crawl, deletes everything, and then suddenly it's back up to speed again. That's why game, video games are made in C++ still to this day, because you're complete control of everything. But nice. Uh, so we're gonna have two constructors. Do I need a destructor? That's my question to you guys. And I'm going to have getters, setters in there. All right. I may not want to be able to set the name of the, the text, but let's, we can if we want. OK, so uh, void set author, void set title. I'm not even thinking. I have four variables. I'll name that. Now, I may not have it called set author. It might be called set writer. So you don't, it doesn't have to match. It just, we just want some way of accessing or modifying variables if we want to. Um, let's do it that, let's do this that way then. Okay, uh, void set um, pages and Call this instead of me uh, doing this. Instead of me saying set current page, I want to say like maybe set, uh, and this is going to be turn page. So the current page I'm looking on starts at page one, then goes to page two, page three. Every time I call turn page, I turn the page. That's the only way to change the page, let's say for now. I'm just coming up with an idea on the spot because we're just trying, we're just playing with some stuff. Okay, let's do some getter methods. Uh, strings, although they are not, they are objects themselves, 
we don't have a pointer to a string. We have a string. I'll, I might be will. I'm willing to modify this to show you what how pointers would work for this. Okay. So um, get title. Get. So what this will do is I will pass out the entire the value in the string, like the almost like a duplication. All the all the data that's in this string, the string object, and it gets passed out and has to be caught by somebody out, out there. That's when we're passing around a string, like it's an object. If I want to make sure it's my object and no one can modify it, that's a different story altogether. But we'll, we'll look at that in a second. We'll try some different things. Uh, okay, and uh, here's setter, I wanna say, and get um, pages, get current page. All right. Is there other things I wanted to do with this? No, I'm going to leave it like this. Okay. So let's should call, make a book, B1. And we're going to have inside of B1. We're going to put uh, if I spell Phoenix right, right. Sorry if I don't. If anyone's a Harry Potter fan, and uh, and let's put the number of pages as well. Um, I think that's like. 687 pages. It's a big ass book. Okay. We're going to have to make this book object. Notice I have quotes around my local files. If I have angled parentheses, that's saying that's from the main library. That's the big, like, that's the stuff that was given to me when I installed Visual Studio. It's, these are the standardized libraries. If I put quotes around it, it's like, look locally. There's a local file in this folder around me here named book.h. That's the difference between those two, in case you didn't know, because I didn't know it when I was doing it. Okay. I'm going to make a book object. I'm going to now just going to save that. I'm going to go to book.h. I'm going to I'm going to define all of these functions. I'm also going to need, I'm going to make two constructors. One is going to be a blank constructor. Oh, oh, cool. It's a book. Too excited about that uh, book, and this is going to have uh, string title, string. Maybe I should want to uh, be title. I'm going to do it this way, just to mess with your heads a little bit. But oh, let me let me leave it alone for right now, and then we'll mess with your heads later. Author. And then int num pages. Uh, do I need a destructor? No, I don't. Not at least for, for right now. I could put in a destructor, but I don't need a destructor right now. I'm going to go and take all this stuff and I'm going to be lazy. And I'm going to go over to book.cpp. And I know exactly what this thing is going to need. It's going to need all of these functions. I'm going to define each one of these things. In going into the object, into the class book, here is me defining this constructor. Going into the class book, here's me defining this function, the constructor. I don't have a destructor, at least not yet. I'm going to just go down here and bang. I mean, that's half the, unfortunately, half the time you're going to spend doing this. If I give you something like that on an exam, that's me wasting a lot of your time. I probably want to go with fewer variables or give you code that has all these stuff, all these setter functions done. And if you make a child class, you're only adding one more, two more functions or something like that. What you don't want to have is a whole lot of you typing, not rather than you showing what you know. That's 
not great for an exam. I sometimes am wrong with my exams, but that's not a great thing for an exam is you spending all your time typing frantically versus actually showing what you know. Okay. Because all of these functions are going to be really, really simple. First of all, I'm going to say, I want to do it a particular way. I'm going to use my setter methods. Why? Because they're doing error checking already for me, right? If I, if the name of the author is Seymour Butts, I'm not, I just won't allow it to happen. So we'll have some kind of default. So what I might, might want to do uh, is be title. Sort of going to be defaulted. Let me see here. That's a function. I know there happens to be a function called this. It is a string. You can clear it so that there's no text inside of it. Oh, I don't want it to be title. I want. Okay. Definitely don't want B title. That's the input parameter. This is the thing where I'm getting the data from. If I cleared that, I've lost all the data that I wanted. That would be a bad bug. Okay. Um, author dot clear. I know it's, I have some variables. They're already there. I'm just going to clear them. Okay. And num pages is equal to zero. Fine. Those are my defaults. In fact, I am going to be using that same those same defaults in my blank constructor. That's all that blank constructor does. Okay. Next, I'm going to set title and be title. I'm going to call this other function. I'm going to set author. Now I could just manually do it, but well, if this is already doing error checking for me, why not just use that? Uh, set on pages. Hopefully, maybe some of you have figured out there is a problem that I'm doing here. Set title. Oh, set title is not even written right. Look at that. Set author and set title are not written right. Set number of pages is not written right. I have to have variables inside of this. It should be. Um, the author, or the author. Um, okay. Fix that. And int new um, pages. All right. Okay. I don't have squat right now, but I want to. I want to have this thing compile as fast as I can. Um, okay, let's see. Is it wrong to define them in the class itself in the header file? It is not wrong in any way, shape, or form. There is only one thing that's wrong with it. In fact, let's maybe we could should do that for set title or something like that. Let's do it for set title. So we're gonna get rid of set title here, and we'll just put that right in the header file. Just to show other people what you mean by that. Set title and title is equal to B. And that should oh semicolon at the end. I don't even know if I need a semicolon here, but see. No, don't need a semicolon there. Why? Again, this ends up being we have conventions because people are lazy, not because they are, you know, it's the right thing to do or it looks prettier or something like that. No, it's pure and unadulterated laziness half the time. In this case, if I wanted to change set title, what's going to happen? First of all, it can't really be more than a line. If you, you can put more than one line, but you really shouldn't because every single time I change this header file, I got to recompile everything and that doesn't sound like much that doesn't sound like much at all here except for in something like a video game like uh so back way back in 2000 i'm making a children's educational video game. 2001 sorry to 2003. now computers got faster but games got more complicated too so it's not exactly like it got any faster but if you change that header file you would go to compile and then you'd go off for a coffee 
because it'd be 15 minutes compiling the damn thing. It has to recompile everything. If I change the save file, I recompile it again, and I have it just changes the one or two files that are affected by that C file. The header files are included everywhere. The entire build process breaks if you change the header file, and therefore you have to re you have to recompile everything. That's the reason we do it in another file. That's the only reason. I'm saying these are the names of the functions. These the names of those functions are not going to change, so I don't have to recompile the whole thing each and every time. I'm just recompiling the couple files that changed. That's it. Okay, so I could do this in cases of, especially for little tiny getter and setter methods, absolutely throw them in there. I, out of habit, I always put them in my CPP file, but you can do this sort of thing perfectly okay. I'm gonna be missing some things because I know my header file doesn't have everything. Must return values. They're all getter methods, right? So I need to return author. We also intentionally have a bug in here that I'll show you that in a second. Return from pages. Return current page. What other things am I have? Set author. Okay. Uh, author is equal to the author. It's not doing anything really right now, but it could be doing something. Is equal to if we want, we can make it do something. Uh, oh, here we go. Get number of pages. Uh, if new num pages is less than zero, turn otherwise set value. If you give me a negative number, the number of pages in my book can never be negative. So if you give me a negative value, I'm not changing the squad. That's essentially what we're saying. New num pages. X. This is me error checking. Why not? That's the one of the reasons we have these sorts of things. Uh, start book. What's that going to do? Current page should equal to zero. Or actually, I should say one. We're going to one based. Everyone counts from one, I guess. Fine. Uh, turn page. Or is it? Or is that all I wanted to do? I want to do some error checking, right? I want to see if I'm at the final end of the book. And if I'm at the end of the book, don't turn the page. Just don't do anything. Fine. So uh, if current page is greater uh, let's do it that way greater than equal to some pages if that's the case current page is equal to some pages and the only reason we're doing this is if you accidentally got into a sticky situation where the number is bigger than the number of pages you set it back to the maximum number of pages just forcing it back into a reasonable number Okay, and then we'll do an else, say, and right. And the reason I have a return value is I want to return the number of pages I'm at. Just it's useful. Why waste a perfectly good return and not have a return statement do something? So, all right. Anything else I'm missing? Nope. Again, I intentionally have an error. Um, actually, maybe I don't. Oh, it won't be an error. It's just confusing. Uh, no, it is an error. OK. Wait, what's going on here? Actually, not intentional, but I, this is like my standard uh, using namespace standard uh, issue. I always have the wrong name here. So uh, it's first of all, this is going to take in. Uh, it needs to be a standard namespace. Uh, book is using namespace standard. So that should be fine. Uh, 
Can I do that? Is it SGD? It should be using a standard namespace. I don't know why it's not. Let's keep it simple. This is me making a static variable, a static object of type string, hopefully. I'm just going to keep things a little simpler. Uh, there. It takes in a character array. It just, you know, there are some shortcut functions, overloaded methods, but I could just say it's equal to this character array, but that's actually an overloaded method. It's actually supposed to be a full-blown object. Uh, okay. Let's see what I got here. Title, author, number of pages. Title, author, number of pages. Oh, wait a second. Let's have a look. Something wrong with books now. Title, author, number of pages. dot. I'm having a really bad time typing up in things today. This is my blank constructor. Getting the title should return the title. All right, I put it in the wrong place. I apologize. So this thing is just going to clear a bunch of stuff out. Let's compile it, see if it works for us. Nope, not yet, but we're almost there. Uh, current page is uninitialized. Oh, great. One, I set it to some safe value. Uh, let's also set this one to some safe value up here. Great. Ah, great question. Fantastic question. If I want to make an array, let's do that. Let's just see it in action. Okay. My books. What's that going to do? Yeah, we, we still have the same problem I had before, but we're just going to walk it through. If we'll talk through this thing first, and then I'll actually fix what the error is. If I have an array of books like I wanted to make, what happens? I will immediately on the spot, at the time, make 10 different book objects in a row. They're just one after the other. Each one is a full size of a book, how much, it how much memory it takes, including the size of the functions themselves. Everything wrapped up into one bundle called a book. And then the next one is the next bundle of data called a book. And the next bundle of data, they get immediately built right away. And if I don't say what kind of constructor I use, I get the blank constructor immediately. That's what the point of a blank constructor. Well, one of the re reasons why you end up getting a blank constructor. It's actually, I always forget the syntax for how to get, so it ends up being me la being lazy, not looking it up, but I always get forget the syntax for how to call a particular constructor for when you're building an array of, of a particular object. It's just kind of a nasty thing. But more importantly, they're not all going to be the same, so you might as well give them the, just a blank version of it, like 10 of these blank constructors, and then you set the title, set the name, set the number of pages. Do it for each one of those things. So that's really where they, the benefit of doing that is. And so it doesn't come up that often where you need to have an array and where you just do an array like this. Most of the time, I actually do an array of pointers, and there's a reason for that too, but we'll see that hopefully soon. Okay. Let's, I, there was something wrong with this. It says, cannot access private member, ver member declared in class book. So what could be going on here? Oh, wait, it's actually not private. Close, but it's not quite private. Every single one of these functions 
is protected. I didn't say what, how, that it was public. This is the other problem I always get into. Those are public functions. Okay, let's see what book says. Why is book a problem? It must be a constructor. It is a constructor. So why is the problem with this thing? There was no problem with that thing. Okay. So I have a blank constructor. I have a constructor that takes three parameters. So I can set up my book right away. Uh, this catch up demo here, that's actually going to make an array of 10 books right away, all of them, all blank. And then I'm going to make a particular book, B1, which has the proper information in it. Okay. So the question then is, uh, well, I said there was going to be a bug, so let's run this and see what happens. Uh, and then afterwards, maybe we want something like printing off the book information. Let's call it just two string. Okay. Tell me all the things you want about this book. And we'll do that in this function. And this function, I'll define it right here. And what do I have? So string, red bell, red bell meaning I just return it. It's not a special name. I'm just lazy. Really lazy. Okay. And if I wanted to, I can also do that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, I'm going to append the title. Let's do this. Plus. Plus author. Plus. As I need to always look up whether the, the uh, what about two spring now? Hit bell. I always forget that. Would you remember? Anyone remember off the top of their heads? what the converting integers to a string is. There's a particular function for it. I, will, I always forget, I have to look it up each time. Um, it's come up in the assignments before as well, but we can look it into it. Okay. Uh, um, Have it. Your, um, string to integer. I'm not sure. No, I think it's uh, ah two string. No. Yeah. Oh wow, it is two string. Okay. Is that gonna work? Let's break down a couple things in here. I think S2I might also work string to integer, but um, A2I is ASCII to integer, so it's one number. But uh, no, no, because that will be a character string. ASCII, A2I is a character string to an integer. Okay. Let's have a look at what we have here. Notice we're not doing math. We have examples of operation overloading. It's a kind of polymorphism which you can actually build yourself. We've actually, I think we looked at it a couple of times. Just a reminder that this is calling a function on the string class. So this is a string, it calls the plus function on it. 
and then you would append this to this string here. This generates makes that a string. Oh, and then I call the plus function again with a string, the string author. And then I call the plus function again with has. This is the same as saying append, depend, 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 depend. Yeah, it was an into string. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's into string, not string to int. Yeah, you're right. String to int. Yeah, that's two I think is what we're looking at. So if I am appending all these things together, that's what this plus operator is. It's the same as calling append. It is, I've defined what the plus operator does, and I call it the plus function. Can't do that in Java, by the way. Uh, and it just replaces the behavior. So instead of doing mathematical operations, I'm concatenating or pending things together. It's off overloading. We also have another form of overloading right up here. Two different constructors doing essentially the same thing. They're both constructors, but they're completely different functions. Which one do I call it? Depends on what the input parameters are. If I have three input parameters, I call this one. If I have zero, I call this one. All right, let's compile this thing and see what we got. Oh, I got to return this. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Return that val. All right. And I'm going to. What I want to be able to do is say, hey, book, print out your own information, which is what, in fact, is what I'm doing here. There we go. B1 dot two string. Okay, and I want to maybe do a C out statement of this thing. It's it's just returning a string. And I can print that to the screen if I want. I could save it to a file. I could do all sorts of things with that. Again, let's compile it. Let's see what we have. This is, by the way, not going to work exactly correctly. I know this because I know where I intentionally introduced a bug. I have other bugs that were accidental, but I have an intentional one. So let me move this over. This Google Drive thing is driving me nuts. OK. So here is my intentional mistake. So the other function, this is for B1. If I want, I can look at my call stack. It's down here. And I could say, this is where I'm calling this from. It's calling my constructor with the title, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, JK Rowling, and 687. OK, I'm going to be clearing all these values. So it goes down a couple steps. And I'm going to set the title. So my title should now be equal to Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Author should now be equal to JK Rowling. So that's my mo local member variables. If I just hover over it, I can see what those are. And the number of pages is now going to be equal to, let's do number of pages, zero. What the, what? The intentional bug. What's wrong? Why is it zero now? Maybe you saw that earlier and went like, he's trying to fool us. Why is that zero? It shouldn't be, it should be 687 or whatever the heck that value was. So why is it zero now? That's what I had up here, 687. What could we do in that? Let me look at my variable, the variable coming in, right? Zero. What? No, it's 687. It's not zero. It should be 687. But it was 687 at when I started. So why is it zero now? Can wait a little while. Who wants a random guess? Fine, random guess. Why is it now zero? I should be setting the number of pages, the local variable, the variable in my object, to 687. And instead, it's now 0. And the input parameter is also 0.
Oh, sure. Here's set on pages. Great. Great guess. Good instinct. Set num pages. If so, here's a new num pages. Uh, if it's less than zero, I return. Otherwise, I set number of pages equal to new num pages. So I don't see anything in here. If you pass in a zero here, it'll set num pages to zero. Sure. But the only way that it's going to set num pages here to zero is if num pages is equal to new num pages is equal to zero. Hmm. It's okay, I'm going to move up again because I, I don't think the error is in there. I, I know it's not in there. Why? Because I intentionally put the error in. But, but that is a great instinct. It was perfectly, perfect, a, a fantastic instinct. Okay, here's what it looks like again. So here's my input parameter. I'm going to set the member variable to uh, name num pages to uh, whatever that input parameter is. Pretty good, I guess. Uh, the, num the blank constructor sets the member variable to zero, but I don't ever call this. This I've noticed there's no, oh, actually I could put a breakpoint in there, but you will not hit that breakpoint. I either call this constructor or I call this constructor. You don't, I'm not calling both. I think technically you can call the other constructor manually as well, but we're not doing that right now. No, not because there's no destructor. The destructor is only called when I clean this thing up, when I get rid of the object. Good guess, but yeah, there's no destructor because I'm not cleaning up the object. I'll give you a hint. What's the name of the param? Well, look, look at the name of, of the parameters. And what are the names of my member variables? And you already complained about me doing this before. And I just wanted to show you again. You said, that's just confusing. Stop being a jerk. And I thought, hey, let me be a jerk again. Sorry. It's because I've done it enough times that I like pointing it out that this is a landmine all the time. Uh, because it's, you have certain names that you just want to go with, right? I wanted my variable to be named numPages. So what's the name of my input parameter? Oh, not, not there it isn't though. It's called numPages up here. In the set method, it absolutely is. But right there, it's called numPages, not new numPages. And I'll tell you one thing, if I call that new numPages instead of numPages, the problem will go away. It's because my input parameter and my member variable have the exact same name. And when I say numPages is equal to zero, which one is it modifying? Not modifying the member variable modifying this thing right here. So I change this to zero on that line here because there are two variables and the one that gets precedent is the input parameter, not the member variable. So I could call this new num pages or I can do, just to remind you, uh, we have this and that will fix its wagon quite nicely. Not the member variable, I want the, I, sorry, not the input parameter, I want the member variable. In this guy, in this object, the member variable in this object is named what? Dumb pages. Okay, fine. I'll, I'm going to setting that one. Not the one in this function, in this object, what is the name of that variable? That's what that's saying. So in this object, change the variable named num pages and set it to zero. Otherwise, what you'll get is you'll change this one, uh, the, the variable here. And then when I go to set the number of pages, it's using a zero. And that's why it's, everything's being set to zero. OK. Just what the this is for, it also allows you to be lazy. But the this allows you to avoid ambiguity. All right. Let's do compiling one more time. Let's see this all in action. Let's turn off the breakpoint, because I'm pretty sure I don't need it anymore. 
And we're good. All right, let's roll. Harry Potter and the Order of Felix by J.K. Rowling has 687 pages, and you are on page uh, on dyslexia. Yay. Um, yeah, I don't know if I read properly or not, but it has not stopped me from being an academic. All right. You are on page one. Page one, actually, in this case. And so every time I turn the page, I'd say I call the turn page function, and it just increments that current page number. So that's what I'm wanting to have. Let's do that. Let's get the catch up demo and let's do uh, b one dot turn page b one dot turn page and that should be if I run this thing again, I should be on page three. That's what I would hope. Test things out. On page three, done. Okay, we have an object. We have a book class. We have some form of polymorphism. We have multiple different constructors. One for a blank constructor, one that takes in input parameters. I'd also like to point out, let's do this. And on the keyboard. Out. Uh, blank constructor. Actually, I can call the out name. Okay. I already have a two string function. I, when I'm done at all of these steps, everything's set up for me. So I could call the two string con uh, and then I'll put something else in here just to make it a bit easier. Um, non blank constructor, and stuff like that. The reason I want to point this out is let's have a look at what we end up seeing. Blank constructor, blank constructor, blank constructor, blank constructor, non blank constructor at the very end. I make 10 books, no matter if I want to make them or not, I will make them by default right away. And then afterwards, when I call this thing and I make a book, I will make a book right away. What I don't get to do is decide when I make a book. That's the problem here. The issue is. If I just go with these things like string title, I am making it no matter what at that time. I don't get to delay when I make it. I don't get to make it when I read in something from a text file or anything like that. If I make a new shape, right, when we do P5B, or I'm going to make a whole bunch of shapes, every time I make a new shape, if I don't have, if, if they were automatically generating every single shape as soon as I made an array, there'd be a problem because I wouldn't get to choose what kind of shape I make. I'm just I'm producing shapes right away. So what I want sometimes is to do sort of delayed gratification. I want to make an array of pointers to things, and then I want to use new. I want to use a dynamic object a lot of the times. So I'm going to change things up a little tiny bit. Uh, it will be an array of pointers to books. All right. Let's, let's just let's run it. Let's see what happens. And one constructor gets called in total. That's it. I made one uh, book object. That's it. The other ones didn't get made at all. They're just pointers. They're a bunch of pointers. That's it. So if I want to figure out when I make my pointers later, I should be making arrays of pointers. And then the thing is I need to call new to make a dynamic object. So let's make a new dynamic object and then we'll actually do that. So after all of this, I'm gonna turn the page a bunch of times and then I'm gonna have four, let's see. 
I'm going to fill up every single one of those things. And I'm going to call uh, AP My Books. Position I, so it's just an array, is equal to I'm going to make a new book. And I could make a constructor, but they don't have to be they don't have to be blank constructors anymore. I could just keep on making a whole bunch of Harry Potter books, one after the other, or whatever book I want to make in here. Uh, test book. Uh, what's a good name? An anonymous. That's the name of the author. And there's ten. There's a like a not even a comic book. That's short. Okay. So for each one of these books, I'm going to make a brand new book. And then afterwards, uh, let's also, just in case you don't believe me, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I want to do the see out statement again. Actually, I don't need that. See, I don't need this at all. The constructor automatically has that CA out statement, so we'll see when it happens. Okay, let's compile it and see what happens. What would I expect now? I would expect that I'm going to have an array of pointers. I have book B1, and then I'm going to make a whole bunch of books. When I call new, I get a pointer to that book. It's my book from now on. I have to give it back to the system later, which I didn't do yet, by the way, so big no-no on my part but I have to give it back to the system later. It doesn't automatically get given back, but it also means it doesn't automatically get given back. If it automatically goes back, it means I don't control when, like if I need that for the entire run of my program, I better not just make it in some function somewhere. It's just gonna get given back to the system. If I need to permanently keep something, I want to call new. Okay, so this is now gonna make 10 new books all called test anonymous, because why not? And then afterwards, I'm and then I'm going to be done. Harry Potter, and then ten anonymous books immediately afterwards. The dynamic memory and the well, especially dynamic objects allow me to choose when it gets created, not gets created immediately. It allows me to delay things. It's kind of a useful tool. And you'll see that, by the way, in assignment A5B, where I'm not making a shape until I actually need that shape. Okay, one other thing. Let's see. Let's make the author. Let's say I don't want to make the author right away. I, want, I just want to keep calling it the person author. Okay, I'm not going to make the author right away. So... I will make a string object sometime. I will now be responsible for cleaning up that string object, the, the string named author. I will be responsible for cleaning that up later. So now, because I need to call new, only because of that now, I need to actually clean this thing up. Okay, so I'm gonna have build a book. I now need a destructor because I have a, a called new. I have to clean things up. You have a party, you clean up after yourself before your parents come home. That's a, that sort of thing, or 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 so I have been told. Yeah. I I've never done anything like that. No. Okay. Here's my destructor. Wow. I don't know why I have a. Oh, that's because I'm in the head of Pasto. Right. Okay. Destructor. Uh, okay. Hold the book. And then author. Well, I'm going to have to delete the author. Okay. So I can say if author is not equal null, as in I, I don't have a null pointer, then I'm going to call author find and I also want to just to make sure 
just so I deleted it. I want to make sure everyone knows I've deleted it, that they don't go trying to reuse the author somehow. Okay. In this case, notice I have errors now because I can't clear this thing. Author is equal to new string and some kind of thing in here. No string, I put some default in there. Okay, get author. It's going to return the author itself. I could return, I don't know if I want to return the pointer. The reason I may not want to return the pointer is because then you have access and you can modify the actual author being stored in the system. So what I might want to do is this string, uh, Val. Again, I'm lazy. I have a return value and red val is equal to, I'm going to dereference uh, dereference the author. That does not mean I, you're giving me access to that author variable. It means I'm going to duplicate all that data, throw it into this thing, return that duplicate. So I copy things over onto another sheet of paper, essentially, and pass that off. And here we go. Uh, author is going to be equal to that. I don't actually want that. I need uh, author dot. Can I do a sign? What can I just say is equal to? Well, author is a pointer, right? So. Clear, clear it. I also need to make sure that the authors, if author not equal now, it'll work. There's probably a thousand one ways to do in this. I just cleared it and just and the rest of the string in there. That's fine. Okay. That'll do that. Do I have any other errors? Yes, I do. I have one error in here. Uh, I want, maybe I want to do, there we go. Right or I need some way of cleaning up. But most of the time, the only time you ever need to clean something up is, so Marie's answering Marie's question. Uh, so you only need to make a destructor if you have new in the constructor, pretty much. It, it's if I need to clean up after myself. So I ask for new memory, I call new and I make a new array. If I call malloc, I still need a destructor as well, right? If I need anything that's dynamic memory, I have an array, a new object, something like that, I need to call the destructor. Or maybe if I, it's not just that, maybe I want to call the destructor. I want to write a destructor when I actually want to have some kind of output statement or to alert somebody else that this thing is being destroyed. Then it's not calling new. It's just when I need the destructor for when I need to know, or I need to do some kind of cleanup at the, when the object dies or is, is cleaned up. So if I need to do a C out statement, on the destructor, make a destructor. If I need to call delete, use a destructor. If I need to send some kind of message or some kind of event to some other object, use a destructor. It's for when I need to worry about the destruction and the cleanup at the end. But most of the time, all those variables, like all these variables that I had in, in here, the, uh, not right, Val, let's see here, number of pages gets given back to the system. So I don't need to set it to a safe value. It's gone away. I don't need to set current page. It's gone away. It just gets given back to the system. Same with the title. It's given back to the system. The only thing that doesn't just magically just get given back is this, because it's a pointer. I would get, I would give back the address, but I wouldn't have actually given back the memory. I'm just giving back sort of the piece of paper saying the address of this thing, right? I'm giving back where it's located, the, the address for it, but not the actual memory. 
That's why I needed the structure here. All right. I don't know. That's a lot of me rambling on here. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to see inheritance or if you want to see another form of polymorphism. Uh, if you, so let me see, what other kind of polymorphism do I have? I don't have good ones right now. Uh, this would be a form of polymorphism. In, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to get away with that. You might yell at me. Wow, it does work. That's really surprising. This is a character. I'm really surprised it works. Like, really, really surprised, actually. This is a character array. It's a C string. It's just an array of characters, one after the other. I didn't know I could do this, so we're finding it out. You can cast that to be a string. Just say, no, 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 it's a string, and it converts it. That is coercion. That is casting. It's like another form of polymorphism. We haven't done templates yet. We'll do those soon. Uh, and the other one that we have is runtime polymorphism. We also have compile time polymorphism, like overloading. But runtime polymorphism is a little bit of a weird thing. Let's see if I can do a very quick runtime polymorphism. I'm going to make a brand new class. Where is it? Add, oh, it's add class. All right. Library book. The base class is book. Uh, it's not base, it's book. All right. I'm going to have everything a book has, maybe with a little bit more. OK, so here's my library book. Uh, what other variables do I need in here? Boolean is out. Why not? Uh, maybe I want to change my two string. And let's also do book. All right. Just because I know that I'm going to be doing other stuff here. Uh, I don't want to change any of that to spring. And all those, by the way, are going to be. And maybe is so the opposite of being out, just because I want to show you that it doesn't have to be the same as the variable name. I want to check to see if this book is available, right, from the library. And then I also want to have uh, void set. All right. And if they don't need that blank constructor at all, by the way. At all. I'll show you why in a second. All right. The blank constructor will automatically call. If you don't say anything, it'll automatically call the blank constructor. That's it. So this thing will call the blank constructor of the parent right away, no matter what. Oh, and I want to say is available. Uh, so is out. No, let's make it equal to this. It's going to be in the library no matter what. All right, uh, so I didn't need it at all because I needed to set the one variable. No, it will not be defaulted as private yet. Great question, Daniel. So if I don't set it at all from my, I always forget it because it's one of those things you shouldn't rely on the defaults. Normally you never rely on defaults. Where bad things happen, you'll find problems. 
most, as far as I know, if you don't say it explicitly, it ends up being protected or it's close enough to protected. I cut you consider it protected as in the child class can see it. You can see it. Think, I don't think it's, I don't think it's defaulted to private. Maybe I'm wrong. And I could, I would definitely be happy to be wrong about this, but you should always just be explicit about it. Um, yeah, I would, I'd be explicit about it no matter what, just in case, because it's one of those things you, everyone should know that you explicitly wanted to be private or you wanted it to be public or you wanted to be protected. Like leaving off your curly braces, just no, put them in. Okay, not, there you go. Uh, well, I don't want it to be true, I want it to be false or it is out. All right, and since I want to call the parents version of this function, I say book, the title, uh, the author, um, pages. That's what that thing is doing. That is saying, call the parents constructor, which you're gonna do anyways, but use this one. Kind of important in this case, right? Because you wanna make sure you call the right constructor. The parents constructor has to be called. It will be called. Because the parent has, the, all the parents data has to be set up properly. So I call a parents constructor and then I say which one I'm going to do. If I don't say this, I will get this default constructor, the one that sets everything to zero and then I have to set the title, set the author, set the, and set the number of pages. Okay. Uh, and so this thing is going to return a string. So what I could do is say book to string. That will get me a string. So I can actually just call the parents version of a function to get the string. And then I'm going to append, uh, Let me see how I want to do this. Okay. Notice um, we're going to have one other little problem here. I want to go and fix it right now before I forget. I'm putting in a new line at the end of each time and I don't want to, I just let the see out statement do it. It's just going to give me the line. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the library book. I'm just going to have this line of text and then it's going to say is a library book that is out. And then I'm going to say if it's whether it's out or true or false. So um, ring, and then I want to say set no, it's not set available, it's available. And I want to say if it's out or not, so it's the opposite of that. Not is available. And it's not this, it's going to be a uh, n plus. All right. Close that append, semicolon, return. Oh, and this has to be. So string red val is equal to, so this is going to make this big long string, saved it into red val afterwards, return red val. All right. Turn not is out. The opposite of whether it's out. Hopefully that's, oh, it's not because it's, I don't have this thing. Notice it doesn't know what is out is because it's not looking in that class. Have to look in that class. Is out is equal to not is available. Not right. There's something wrong with this. Declaration of library book is declared on line 10. Um, library book that H, it's going to have the same style of the wrong name. Ah. 
All right, so let's make some library books in my original demo here. And hopefully you're gonna see what the problem is. Okay, I need to make sure I include library book. All right. So I'm gonna keep on making a new library book, putting it into this array. Well, they're all books, so that's fine. And then I'm gonna, when it's doing that, it's gonna output something about uh, library. Actually, I probably should do that for loop that I said I was going to do afterwards, just for the library books. And let's just put it in here. So AP my books, position I, uh, and then I'm going to uh, two string. Okay, so this should be a bunch of library books, one after the other. Okay, so what were we expecting here? Maybe you're already seeing through my clever facade here. What would I expect here? I would expect if I have a bunch of library books, I'm making library books, that I'm gonna get this call right here. In fact, let's put a breakpoint in there just to make sure we hit that and we call it. Right, I'm gonna call this function that it's going to grab all this text. It's even going to include the, is the library book that is out, right? Unlike the previous version of it. That's what I would hope. It's I made a bunch of library books. Okay, let's, well, my kids are loud. Okay, so let's see this in action. And library book, okay, that's good so far, but that's the text they gave it. Test book, anonymous, 10 pages, and you're on page one. What the hell? Nothing about is out. In fact, I didn't hit that breakpoint that I put in there. Why? And we're gonna have to go soon, but I wanna show uh, one more little trick in here. Why did I not, I'm calling the wrong function. I'm calling the one for the book class, not for the library book. I did, I created a whole bunch of library book classes. Let's have a look at that. That's a great instinct, but here's me making a new library book over and over and over again. It is a library book. I can put the breakpoint in that library book right here. If you don't believe me, well, let's do that. Sounds good. It's a good solid instinct. All right, let's do that. Run it again. Bang. I'm making library books. I'm hitting that breakpoint. So, it can't be that I'm not creating a library book. So what the heck is going on? So I'm making a library book. Gets me the pointer to a library book. I'm then storing it where? In this array. But it's, it is a library book. It's not a book. It's a library book. It just happens to, it's a special kind of book, but it's being stored in this array of books. And what happens when I call to string on this? I'm really going to go soon. My kids are starting to scream at each other. I think they're hungry. Um, okay, so you're going to you're going to help my kids by answering this. Why is it that I'm calling the book version of two string, not the library book version of two string? Because that's what's happening. It's clearly making a new library book, but when I call two string, I'm getting the book version of it.
<laughs> I I love it. I'm not sure if it's a guess or not. It's the right answer, but I'm not sure if it's a guess or not. It's like virtual uh, pointers. Yeah, it, both actually correct. So not a guess. Great then. Perfect then. It's not virtual yet. It's calling the wrong version of it because it sees a pointer. It sees a pointer of type book and it says, what function should you be using? Well, it's a book. It's a book pointer. So I should be using books pointer. And there's nothing you can do to tell it otherwise the way it is right now. What you need to do is say like, no, 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 figure out which version or which, like if it's a child class, you want the child classes version of this. That's where we use our virtual table. So if let's do one, two th different things here. Let's do that will print everything out correctly because it's a pointer to a library book and you know it. But if I have 17 different shape, you know, different types of book, I want it on a, I just want a bunch of lot. I want a bunch of books and let the object figure out which function to call. I don't want to have to say, oh, no, that's a pointer to a library book and that's a pointer to a, this book and that's a pointer to that book. I want it to be based on the class itself. The class tells you which class, which function to do. So if I run this, it's going to call the right functions, but I want to do something better. I want to just be a bunch of books. Make sure, oh, and I'm hitting the breakpoint. Right. I'm going to turn that breakpoint off. Otherwise, I'm going to see a bunch of these things. Library book and is a library book out or not? No, it's not out in all these cases. Okay. So let's, instead of this, I'm going to put my breakpoint back in just in case you don't believe me. I'm going to go catch up demo. I'm going to get rid of the word library here. There's still just a bunch of books like I had before. But now I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to, let's say, to string. Here's me putting the word virtual. I probably should go to the library, not for not because I need to, but just at a convention, put virtual in here too. Why? Because it's going to be virtual, but you want to be very, very, like everyone should know, much like saying whether your variable is private or not, you don't rely on defaults. You don't want to rely on a default. You want to say like, no, it's virtual, just in case the person doesn't believe you or doesn't realize nine classes up, it's virtual. It leads to a lot of problems. So just explicitly stating each time it's virtual is useful. Now let's compile it. And there we go. And I'm in a breakpoint where I would expect to be. And here we go. Everything's working as expected. Because now I, I have a pointer to a book. It's a book pointer. That's what my array is. But then when I go into the object, you look up which function to use. That's what the virtual table's for. It allows you to call the right function for the right class. And that's our runtime polymorphism. The, I don't know if I can do it, but if I remove this right here, I think I will get a runtime error rather than a compile error. I'm not 100% sure. Not. Well, I can always find out. It might allow me to get away with this. And, but I know there are situations one of the reasons why some people argue against runtime polymorphism is because if you forget to inst if you forget to define one of your functions, oh, it didn't allow me that. That's good because that would have been bad. Uh, but there are ways of you get the wrong version of a function, or you don't the function isn't defined, and things blow up. You don't actually call that function unless you're uh, unless it's the right class. So it's um, it can lead to weird sticky situations, but it's absolutely critical if you want to make sure that your code works the way you expect it to. Okay. So we showed a bunch of uh, forms of polymorphism. We showed inheritance by having the library class versus the book class. It's the same thing, just with one extra variable. We had a book class. We defined all the parts of our functions for the book class. We made a whole bunch of books. We looked at the difference between making an array that was a static array, oh, sorry, a static array of objects versus a static array of 
pointers to objects and that I don't actually instantiate with pointers to objects, I have to call new. Now that's my thing. Oh, better not do that. Let's fix that. Ooh, that was close. Here we go. Instead of this thing, AP, my books, and position I, right? We have a pointer to it. I want to make sure I do that. I have a memory leak from all the other times I ran my program. Every time when I, it only gave back the memory when I was done my program, but that's not when I want it done. I want it done. I want to choose when I will always want to get in the habit of cleaning up my memory, making sure I press, I, I, I delete it. Because if I don't, and I have this program run for five days, you have a memory leak. Not bad. Or actually you have, if it's mine and I don't give it back, I'll just have a resource leak essentially. Uh, it's still bad. It's very common to get a memory leak if you accidentally don't give back. If I delete this array, for example, it's a memory leak because I still have the pointers or the pointers are still mine. I've given them away. I've just sort of deleted all instances of it. And now they're still mine, but no one has access to the data. And I always said to null, just in case someone wants to use it again, I want them to have a null pointer exception, not random stuff. In case you're wondering if this actually happens, I was helping a student for 1400 yesterday and literally the array size that we're using is too big for what we were trying to transfer over. It was 80 instead of 20 and it merely let me stomp on another 60 bytes of data afterwards, another like 60 bytes after the, the array was done and it started writing on other text and I got weird, random, almost literally random events happening as a result. And this is in 1400. Okay. If you are not care, like if you do not set things to null, it will, and I give this back, I didn't set it to null. And then I go to access it. I can stomp on other memory in my system, other memory in my code, and you're completely unaware. And there's, it's next to impossible to track down. It is one of the nastiest kind of bugs you're going to get where you have something else modifying memory while you're also modifying it. It is you writing your essay and you're uh, like, you're using a, a Google doc and your friend going in and just deleting your essay while you're writing it. And you don't see any indicator that your friend is using your Google doc. That's what we're talking about. It is nasty. So just out of, just for your own sanity, please set it to null after you're done. Okay, everything's working and we got the delete. We're good to go. I'm hoping that was useful for you guys. I went long yet again. I'm going to, this is gonna be saved. I'm gonna upload it online into our normal synchronous lecture uh, playlist for other people to look at. Um, in, in case any of your friends are interested, I know you, this is what everyone's gonna be doing on a Friday night is looking at this video. It's like, yeah. Um, maybe it's a drinking game, I don't know. Um, that'd be fun. Anyways, here is a, the, the book class. It is in the code repository in the Google Drive that I've shared with you with all of our code. So this exam to review project is there as well. So you can have a look at it. Uh, no MFC, great question. No, definitely no MFC. I'm next to incompetent using MFC myself. So I'm not gonna be putting that on you guys. And it's a lot of memorization. No, absolutely not. MFC is only useful for this class to A, let you get be a bit creative and, and have some fun with this, but also just show you a GUI layout tool. So nope, no MFC there. MBC for sure. Model view controller, what we do for A5B, absolutely on there, but not MFC. It's only for this one assignment. Nice. All right. Well, anyways, guys, I'm going to take my leave right now. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm hoping this was helpful. Pose other questions if they come up, okay? Um, inheritance and polymorphism. Yep. And strings, different C strings and strings. Yeah. Nice. All right. Thank you, everyone. And let's see if I can stop sharing. All right. And stop the project. All right. Thank you. Bye.